I was 14 years old, my new English teacher took the role and then came up to me and said, so, you're the poet. Me? I guess so. I had thought that being a poet meant that you lived 200 years ago, had your books in the school library, and probably died young from something that could have been prevented by modern medicine. <laughs> I loved reading and writing poetry. I had even won a little competition the year before. But somehow, I just never thought of myself as a poet. I believe everybody needs poetry in their lives. But stereotypes like this are suppressing too many young writers, and it's time for that to change. I visit primary schools to talk about poetry, and many of the students I meet have written a poem or two in class before. Many raise their hands when I ask if they want to be authors or poets when they grow up. So I ask them a simple question. What exactly is a poet? I get quite a few blank stares. It must be a trick question, right? A person who writes poetry? <gasps> you! William Shakespeare? You're partially right, I say. So what about you? Are you a poet? Are you a poet? And they shake their heads. Why? You are a poet. You are all poets, even if you've written just one poem. Why is this so important? Well, we tell children they are readers if they spend a little time in the library. So why not poets if they've written a few poems? I have heard too many poets my age say, Oh, I'm not really a poet. I just write a little here and there. Or, I just wrote a few things in high school, just before sharing an astounding piece of writing. Something doesn't fit. Why are we still teaching this clear definition of a poet and making it seem so unattainable that adult poets still believe it? Let's go back to the beginning. When I was in primary, I wrote a lot of short acrostic poems. And I'll admit, it was a low effort way for me to get out of proper writing. Was I a poet then? No one seemed to think so, least of all myself. I like to say that the poem that started it all was a sparrow poem I wrote when I was 12. Importantly, this was the first poem I wrote purely for the sake of it, rather than as a class activity. I honestly can't tell you why I decided to write a poem that day. I just did. Sometimes you just get that impulse to do something creative, but it does help if you've been exposed to a lot of art beforehand. Well, my parents and teachers had shown me a lot of poetry, so I sat down and wrote. It started like this. The sparrow's path lies through a tumultuous sea and oceans of dream-ridden sky. Tossed by the wind to a quarreling breeze, he hears not the harsh waters cry. But slowly and surely his wings find a way, escaping the ribbons of cloud that whisper his promise and beg him to stay. Please leave not our billowing shroud. Far, far below him the waves sing a tune, a galleon raises its sails. Pearly and white, this ship is a moon, and stars are the ocean's whales. Sparrows, storms, the age-old decision between adventure and comfort, nothing remarkable. A lot of the things I'd read used birds symbolically. So, I chose sparrows because they were all around my school and were small, ordinary, and relatable. The poem was a first draft. It was far from perfect. I had even completely made up a word in a later part of the poem. But it was special because it was mine. This was the moment I realized I didn't need anyone to tell me when to write a poem or how to write it.
and the poem opened the door to a huge amount of experimentation and self-expression. The more I wrote, the more I figured out how I wanted my poetry to look and sound. Eventually, my poetic trademark became using nature imagery, like this, to tackle the deeper questions. Not all poems need to be deep, however. For example, I found an old poem of mine about Brussels sprouts that said, Brussels sprouts make me feel tall, as if I am a mermaid munching on a small sea cabbage. I honestly can't tell you where I was going with that one. <laughs> At the end of the day, every line and every poem I wrote mattered because they were my words the way I wanted them to be. It turns out you can put anything in a poem, and young me loved that freedom. Despite all this, I still didn't dare to call myself a poet until two years later in that English class. I wish I had understood the magic of poetry earlier, because poetry has continued to influence my life. For many poets I have met, poetry is no longer just an outlet, or even just a passion. It is part of who they are. Many have told me that their lives are better for having poetry in them. Writing leads to sharing, and sharing builds courage and confidence, both in poetry and in everything else. I have seen for myself the long-term effects of poetry on brave young adults who were once shy children, who aren't afraid to share their personal tales and most authentic selves with their audience. Poetry certainly made me more confident and a much better communicator. For example, I was admittedly average when it came to speeches in school. I was a shy child, and I just never resonated with the lists of recommended topics. Yet, here I am. And poetry has led me to MC at and perform at open mics, and to share my poetry with hundreds of school children. Really, it's the amount of time I've spent thinking about words while writing that has lent me that courage to explain and share all the things that I care most about. What are some of the other powers of poetry? A poem is usually short, and it often captures a single thought, scene, or feeling. For me, writing poetry feels a lot like journaling. Poets break the world into bite-sized chunks, Take the time to process each one and find ways to put on paper things that at first seem incommunicable. That's why a well-written poem can appeal to so many different readers, because it resonates with something they've been struggling to put into words. Poetry is a frame of mind. Being a poet is about perspectives almost like developing a poetry muscle in your eyes and ears that recognizes beauty in unexpected places. Children are more able to appreciate those little, ordinary things, and they are easily taught to see patterns and beauty in the world. That's why their writing can be so special, because they are innately poets. Many adult poets tell me that poetry has made their lives more beautiful. But poetry is even more powerful than this. Poetry changes the world. It's often used for advocacy because it can condense big messages into a few memorable lines. There are entire anthologies and poetry events structured around these poems. Our legends, wars, and the ongoing struggles we face as individuals and a species are all there in our poetry. Some of these poems are certainly not for the faint of heart, but even those could become children's poems used to introduce these important concepts in an accessible form. The less obvious but more far-reaching power of poetry is in how it changes the minds that then shape the world. Exposing ourselves and our children to poetry will create generations of open-minded and optimistic people who will approach the future world with a mindset that sees the beauty and potential in everything.
perhaps they will even have the eloquence needed to solve some of the world's problems together. So, if poetry is so great, why aren't there poets on every street corner? It comes back to those stereotypes I mentioned at the start. All children have creative potential, yet they rarely become what we call poets or artists on their own. They need the courage and initiative to direct that poetic lens of childhood onto paper. It happens by exposing children to a diverse range of children's books and poetry, even nursery rhymes, and then encouraging them to give it a go. For myself, it took that one teacher who approached me not as a 14-year-old writing random bits of rhyme, but as a poet in my own right, showing me that being a poet was an identity that I could access. I love asking children, what do you like about poetry? I like writing things about me. I like the way I thought of the poem, sitting and thinking about nature. It made me more confident. I like making things rhyme. And poetry is fun. So the seed is there, and the creativity certainly is. All we need to do is sustain that enthusiasm and the next generation will all be poets. When I visit schools, I make poetry seem approachable and less daunting by starting them out on group poetry. Poetry, like other art forms, is a great way for diverse people to find commonality. We write a line each and glue them together to produce a final poem. It's beautiful watching children from different classrooms, backgrounds, and even reading levels, all working happily together to produce poetry. With enough encouragement, every kind of child sits down and produces something beautiful. And by the end of our workshops, I have seen many become more confident with sharing their thoughts and emotions. The final poem is a visual depiction of the power of teamwork, more than the sum of its parts. When I read it back out to them, I remind them of the power of the single line of poetry they each wrote, because it proves that they can be poets. This is just one of many ways to awaken the poets in our children, but it illustrates how easily it can be done. So, why is children's poetry relevant to you? Most of you are grown-ups, or at least you believe you are. Well, the good news is it's not too late. You see, all poets were children once. Children's books, children's films, and children's poetry, they all hold something for everyone. Have you recently rewatched a Disney movie you used to love and noticed new messages? Do you still recall the wisdom found in children's books such as The Little Prince and The Chronicles of Narnia, or even Winnie the Pooh? You can benefit from reading children's poetry, but one step better than that would be to write some. But where to start? Here are three ways to bring poetry into your life with lessons learned from children. If writing poetry seems daunting to you, try approaching it like a child would. People think that adult poetry has to be long and serious and use rare words and require multiple readings to understand it at all. But poetry has no formal definition. And just like visual art, there is a lot of beauty to be found in simplicity. We've seen how the short, Simple lines that children write make for perfectly good poems once they're strung together. And poetry certainly isn't just for Englishy people. Again, look at children. They're less worried about getting things perfect. And I found their writing really flourishes once they're told not to bother too much about things like spelling and handwriting. Non-native English speakers have sometimes written some of the best lines of all. Number two. Start small. So I asked children, what is a poem? And here are the, a few of the things that they said. It's something short that rhymes, 
it's like a story but shorter. It has metaphors and similes. It has patterns. It's about just one thing. Clearly, all of them are correct. Poetry is all of these things and more. There are so many options out there and when you're just wanting to write something, it's important to start small. Write about one thing you see or hear. A single thing you find special. One thought. One message. Write a single line. Next time, add a few more. Maybe make them into a stanza. Soon you'll have a whole poem, and then two poems, three poems. Lastly, remember, poetry is a frame of mind. I've written a poem about a broken daisy I found on the footpath and my curiosity as to who picked it and why it was dropped again. I've written about a bouquet of wilting tulips in the hospital reception. I've written about my grandfather's collection of empty honey jars and about the time I saw a surgeon cry. What these things have in common is that you could see them and move on or you could pause and think about them for just long enough to find some poetic beauty. So, stretch those poetry muscles. Rekindle that sense of wonder you got as a child when you noticed a perfectly symmetrical spider web or a random sentence in conversation accidentally rhymed. It's noticing these little things that makes for the best poetry and the happiest poet. And if you get distracted contemplating the beauty of it all, that's fine too, because you just brought a bit of poetry into your life. So give poetry another try and it will change you for the better. Maybe you already write a little here and there. Go back to what you wrote during school, after your first breakup, or just for the fun of it. Maybe you're going to write your very first line of poetry today. Or maybe you're just going to start by committing to noticing the little things around you and seeing your world in a more poetic light. Let me remind you now, you are a poet.